All right, so today we're going to talk about 2023's most overhyped about products that you've seen on several channels on YouTube and also probably in the media and also movies. We're going to share our thoughts on if these products are overrated or underrated for 2023. First off, in the tech and home theater tech, this is one of the biggest developments this year of 2023, Dirac Art. This is a new way of handling base management. I don't know how well it's going to work. I know Don has heard it. It's using essentially bass from bass capable speakers and kind of redirecting it throughout the room and trying to give you equal amounts of bass everywhere so that you have even seat to seat bass distribution throughout your room. Uh, am I correct on you simplifying correct. that? Okay. So you heard it, I think, at like the last CDA or maybe you've installed it yourself. A few times, yeah. How did it sound? Do you think that this new development, this new technology, is it overrated or is it underrated? Um, I, if anything, it's underrated. The new direct system. Now, I will put a caveat: if you're plugging into a pre-pro or a receiver and expecting it to do its best, you're you're mistaken. Um, you should have a, a laptop with the software downloaded and a really good mic at the minimum, like a mini mini DSP microphone or something even better. Um, or even hire somebody that really knows direct, like a Matthew Pose or someone. Um, um, it's really, really good. It's a, it's a fantastic system. Leaps and bounds from what we've been used to over the last 10 years. All right, so Dirac Art, which is now, I believe, wait, it's not available yet for Denon Morantz, right? That's multi-base management. Coming out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's coming. So Dirac Art is only available right now for Storm Audio products. Storm Audio, which I heard the genes, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so Gene hasn't implemented it yet, though. Oh, he has. Not yet. But his his speakers are capable, right? Those RBHs? Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. And, you know, this goes... I know. I remember me and Gene did have a video on this in the past where I was like, you should probably have surround speakers that are bass capable because your surround speakers are capable of, of having, like, full range frequencies going to them. Now I think this is a, a really good solid case for having base capable surround channel speakers. Yeah, yes or no? If you want to implement direct art. You can. I just don't think it makes that big a difference, honestly. All right. So is this an overrated technology or is it underrated? Well, no, I think what it does with your base channels and the management directs a great system. It's fantastic. It's the best one that I've used or heard so far. All right, so you're saying it's you're saying it's underrated, though. All right, I didn't say it was underrated. You, you saying it's overrated? Jerk! And I said it was underrated. It's a great system. <laughs> okay. How many people you know have deep bass surrounds? At least uh, you know bed layer surrounds. How many people do I know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I see a lot of in walls that are coming out that are pretty capable. I think RBH makes them. I think De well, Jeans all got my some. Roll off at around fifty, so. All right, well, that's pretty That's pretty capable. I mean, Gene's got some beefy, like, dual 8-inch side surrounds as RBH is. I know Perlison's got some beefy in-walls coming out. Uh, I mean, I, they're actually out already. Um, so, I mean, there's going to be a slew of people that are going to be able to take advantage of this technology. So, I would think if you're building a new room or if you have the extra funds you want to upgrade, I would say, yes, get, get some surround speakers that are base capable. Just my thoughts. So I, I'm on the I'm on the underrated technology as well. Even though I haven't heard it, I would just assume that it's probably an underrated tech that if you want to really utilize it, then you're probably gonna to want to get some base capable surround channels. Just my thoughts. Obviously, Don's is different than mine. Well, I think if they roll off at 50 or so, that's pretty base capable. I think so too, yeah, for sure. And to piggyback off of that, Trinov has their own technology which handles base in a base array so basically you have subs in the front of the room subs in the back of the room and then i guess how it works is they kind of cancel any standing waves in your room by kind of almost kind of like a reverse phase type of thing i don't know the full technology behind it but basically you got to have subs in the front room back room they kind of fire at a phase so you get equal amount of bass through all your seats as well that's my understanding don is that simplifying it yeah yeah it's simplifying it and i i had i got to hear it at cedia yep and it did not blow my skirt up 
Yowzas. No. I mean, it was a cool room, but I mean, there's like 20 subwoofers or some crazy stuff in there. And they had the bass down pretty low from what I like it, but it was cool. But I, I, I didn't, I didn't leave that room going, Oh my God, this is the next thing. You know, I, I didn't, it did not blow my skirt up, but it was a great room. So you would say the record is better? No, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> what a, that's a bitch. I'm just trying to, trying to get you thought. You're so full of shit. You're pro you thoughts. I'll watch Shane. He is completely full of shit. Okay, so you have installed a Trinov 64 channel system in a gigantic mansion. Yes. Um, yes. I guess you did that before waveforming came out. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Would you have that. Would you have implemented that? Or could you could you still implement that? Absolutely, yeah. but I just don't know what, how big a difference it's going to make. So, I guess we'd have to do a lot of measurements in a room to see that, you know, to see what the validity of that is. Look, if Trenov spent all this effort and research on, I'm sure it does great. I heard it at the the um, Ascendo slash Trenov room at Cedia. You know, it was a great demo, but it, it it did not blow my skirt up. I didn't leave there going, "Oh my god, that was the best I've ever heard." And I think they toned it down a little bit too. Evidently they turned it up to do some demos early on. And it just, I mean, it was like, I don't know, 16, 18 inch subs and 20 or 21s and yeah. 30. It was just nuts. Yeah. It was crazy. So I, I, I went in there expecting to get my teeth knocked out. You know what I mean? And it was yep. like, oh, it was cool, but I didn't really care for the demo material either that much. So. Yeah. I heard the, uh, I heard it was kind of, underwhelming it was underwhelming not I mean, only it it was a fantastic theater great video I, I just i didn't like the demo material i didn't like the trend of weird ass video that they had that they played on it and it didn't like i mean with that amount of bass it was like you ride in a porsche and nobody goes above 50 you know what i mean it just you know, they could have done a lot more with it i think but i think at the same time, they had a lot of people going through there. It was a line of 20 people trying to get in there, and they kind of didn't want to, you know, scar anybody. So, but I'm a base head, so. I mean, I heard not, <coughs> not only from uh, normal folks, but some people that had. Well, everybody was saying that. I mean, yeah. everybody said, ah, it was cool, but, you know. But it could have been better. Like, it was too low. The, the, the Grimani was room was actually, when they turned the subs up, the Grimani room was actually really kick-ass. Uh, wasn't that direct art, though? Mm, or was that sure. way yeah it was storm audio so yeah okay so what are you gonna put in you gonna put in the underrated or overrated category for for the, the waveforming I, tech i i i don't have enough information to give it a super valuable i know matt's gonna do it in his system yeah uh, his personal theater when i go down and do it too and, and, and you know i can sit at matt's for hours and listen and tweak it out and play around with it then i'll give my opinion on it so i don't want to because I love Trenov and I love all the people. I think they do an amazing job. I, I'm, I'm going to say a neutral on that one. God damn it, dude. I knew you were going to well, say that. All right. That. As of right now, underrated or, or overrated. Right Ooh. now. Hold on. Until I hear more. Whoops. I can't wrong be wrong. Okay. I have no thoughts on it because I, you know. I've heard. Oh, bullshit. You make a thought. <laughs> You son of a bitch! You make a thought right now. <laughs> I haven't heard it. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on underrated. Yeah, turn off. No, and then, and, uh, All right, I'm gonna say underrated just because uh, I feel I feel any any developments in in base management is gonna be maybe an underrated type of thing until everybody gets it in hand. I feel like uh, it's underrated because people say it's super expensive. You need to be in this elite Trinov club, and so they're just gonna poo poo on it. So I'm gonna say it's gonna be an underrated type of technology. You can buy a decent automobile for what that costs. That's very true. You it could. should massage you. It should make you tingle. All right. So, uh, all right. So, all right. So, we went with the waveforming direct art. That's the two technologies that came out in 2023. This is going to be a this is going to be a very divisive one for many people. This product has been has been around for decades now. But lately, the past year, maybe two, maybe three, a lot of people, just normal people, even a lot more YouTubers as well. Kaleidoscape, Don. Underrated, overrated product. We all know what it does. 
Just in case you don't know what it does, Cloud Escape is basically a media player that downloads full bitrate files, audio and video, nearly the same, if not better, than what would be found on a 4K Blu-ray disc or Blu-ray disc or DVD quality disc. You can download the file onto built-in hard drives into the media player. It's not streaming just like you would get on like iTunes or Vudu or Movies Anywhere. You're actually downloading the full like 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 120 gig files to the hard drive, which you can play back on your television or projector set. You do not have to be connected to the internet. You can play these files offline. They get these files directly from the studios. They compress them themselves, which can be less compression than 4K discs or Blu-ray discs or DVD discs, which would give you Sometimes drastically better resolution and quality because of the less compression. Sometimes it looks exactly the same as the 4K discs or Blu-ray discs. And then the audio would be exactly the same as you would find on a regular 4K physical media disc. Is this product an overrated product, Don, or is it an underrated product given the ecosystem and the price associated with it? If you're too poor to own it like me, it's probably overrated. But if you actually own it, it's underrated. It's a phenomenal product. And it, it, it is the gold standard on video playback. That's why everybody at Cedia that was doing a demo used a Cloud Escape because it, it's the best way to watch a movie. Physic Listen, I own thousands of DVDs. And I collected them for years. Physical media is dead. It's dying. Itch. Period. Sorry. I'm sorry you like having the cases and the big ugly racks full of discs. Good for you. But it's just, it's it's a dying art. And Kaleidoscape's the best way to watch a movie. Period. End of story. Drop the mic. It is. You can, everybody's got an argument towards it. It's only people that don't own it. Everybody that owns it's like, I freaking love this thing. I've talked several people into buying them. Sold tons of them and they love them. It's an absolute amazing product way better than having to go pop out a disc, put it in a disc player that you hope doesn't break with your disc in it. Um, I've got an OPPO, you know, HDR full badass OPPO. I rarely use it. I stream. Um, as soon as I can, I'm going to get a live escape. That's just the bottom line. Everybody that's bought it, nobody regrets it. Now there's a couple of people have had some issues with the hard drives and blah, 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 which it's a hard drive and that happens, but it's absolutely amazing. The sound, the picture, it's just top shelf, period. It's a luxury item, though, you know. But isn't a theater a luxury item? Listen, yeah. everybody's building, spending 30, 40, 50, 25,000, 10,000, whatever it is, 50,000, 100,000 on theaters or more. In the case of what I do, three, four, five hundred thousand. And you're going to put a, just use an Apple TV or a, mm -hmm. a Blu ray player. I mean, I'm telling you, Kaleidoscape is the ticket, it's, it's the sauce. I've sold them for years when they weren't so great back in the day. And they they were a lot more expensive back when I started selling. They were like 40, 50 grand. It's just the way to go. Hollywood uh, producers, directors, everybody that 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 plays back movies all use Kaleidoscape. Kaleidoscape is the trend off. I mean, if you own a trend off and knock a Kaleidoscape, you're an idiot. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it's a great piece of equipment. The navigation menu is awesome. The, their prices are competitive when you download it. Yeah. You, don't you have a Cloudscape, Shane? I do have a Cloudscape. Right, yes, well, I do so have a Cloudscape. Underrated or overrated? All these guys, all my subscribers know I <laughs> land on the subject. No, um, I, no bullshit, bitch. You, see, you, got, you made me. You got to <laughs> put you on a spot. Okay. It, if you can't afford it, it's overrated. If you own it, it's underrated. I Yeah, I can, see, I can definitely see where you're coming from there. If you... If you can't afford it and you can't understand the value behind it, it is an expensive product, just like the Trinov is a super expensive product. The Trinov does exactly the same as a $300 Denon AVR if we're just going to cut down well, to the very basics of it. Yeah, you can have an Apple TV and a $1,200 receiver. And yeah. You're, you go. But the, the real main thing is that, listen, if you're going to watch a movie, you can download movies in as quickly as like four or five minutes, if not less, depending on how fast your speed is and which cloud escape Quick. drive that you have, the Terra drive, Quick. I think it's called. And uh, the thing is, like, if you have a nice high quality home theater, you don't necessarily have to have a super high quality home theater. Maybe if you just care about the convenience factor, 
But if you do have something like a Trinov or a Storm or one of these um, AV tens or audio control or what, it doesn't matter. Correct. It's yeah, still, it's it's putting the proper tires on a Porsche. Yeah. So I mean, just to enjoy your media as quickly as possible. Isn't that you don't? There's no DIY solution that's going to be as quick as doing it on the Cloud Escape. I know you can make your own HTPC. I have an HTPC myself, but then you have to go and rip the movie. You have to put it on your drives. Blah 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 blah. You have to keep your maintenance on that device as well. Sometimes there's updates. Sometimes that will knock out the player. Um, sometimes, listen, if it's on a Windows. You know how you guys know how Windows works, right? Sometimes you get the blue screen of death. Crash. <laughs> With the Clyde Escape, it just works. You go on your phone. You don't have to go on your phone, but if you want to, you can go on your phone, pick a movie. You can play from the. You can play from your phone. It shoots it over to the Clyde Escape, and it just yeah. on and your it, way home from work. You want to watch a movie? You down, hit download. And it, it's really quick. Like their their yeah. download speeds are amazing. Yeah, like I said, like a couple of minutes. Like less than five minutes if you have some good internet, you can get a movie download. It's not one. It's not one to two hours. I mean, if you haven't, if you have one of the older Stratos, okay, one to two hours. <laughs> if you get one of the new ones, I don't know. Everybody's gonna have their own thoughts on it. But the fact of the matter is, I have a Cloud Escape. I have 4K Blu-rays. There is a difference if you have a big enough screen. It's easier to discern a difference on the larger movies with the higher quality files. Is it harder on an 80 gig Cloud Escape disc? And an eight, oh, sorry, is it harder to discern the difference between an 80 gig Cloud Escape file download and an 80 gig 4K Blu ray? Yes, it is because they pretty much look the same. But on those longer movies, Cloud Escape does shine, especially on a larger screen. We're not talking about 75, we're not talking about 70 inch OLEDs or 85 inch OLEDs. We're talking about like 120, 150, 250 inch screens. That's where Cloud Escape really can it's shine. Crazy. Every time we talk about Kaleidoscape, we should name it Kaleidoscape Attack of the Pores because that's the <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh my God, you're so full of shit. Does that really make a difference? Yeah, it does, dude. It's yeah. It's just a big um, ass way to have your movies. But the, but the thing is, it's it's a convenience factor. It makes your media easily more easily accessible. There's really no end user interaction to get your movie onto a player other than press buy or to press play. Okay. That is uh, that's a big deal for people that obviously can afford it. That just want to simplify just enjoying content. That's something that people that can't that that can't justify the 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 price, or maybe they just can't afford it. It's hard to quantify totally. that convenience factor totally for them. Get it. I totally yeah. get. It. I don't have one yet. Yeah, but once you use it and you live with it for a little bit, a little bit. Um, is it expensive? Yes, it is expensive. Yeah. <laughs> is eight thousand dollars super expensive to enjoy your media? Forty grand for a pre-pro expensive? It's preposterous. It is preposterous. It's ridiculous. Preposterous. I'll be the but, first to tell you that's crazy. But when when you're into this hobby, and I mean into it, yeah, not just watching a video like like it's 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 that trying to always achieve that better amount. And you guys that are into it know what I'm talking about. Kaleidoscape is the pinnacle. But don't feel bad if you don't have one. I don't. I have an Oppo. I've got Apple TV. I've got Roku. You know, and and I'm perfectly happy with all that. But do I want a Cloud Escape? Desperately. Does Macintosh anybody apps. that owns a Ferrari ever bitch about a thirty thousand dollar upgrade on? You know, I mean, like it. It is what it is, dude. And, and yeah. I'm not knocking people. I just don't understand the anger and the emotion that talking about Cloud Escape digs up. Oh my! Everybody has something better. <laughs> yeah. Everybody. Oh my God, you could do this, or this piece is better, and this is better. Or why would you do that? Does this make a difference? Dude, sorry. Like, we're just talking about a pinnacle product in this industry, and that gives you the if best it, possible performance. If Class, if Classcape you know, was, if Classcape was three ninety nine, trust everybody, me, would own it. everybody, everybody, would, everybody would dump their disc. That would be the death knell. Yeah. The, the, the amount of, it would shrink the amount of hate on it would shrink. Yeah, there'd be like almost we all one eight. You, and you, yeah, everybody that bitches about it and says something about it would own one if it was affordable. And yeah, would go, damn, this is the best thing I've ever had. This is amazing. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick it in the underrated category. It is an underrated category because well, it gets get crapped on so much, but it does what it it does what it does it does what it, what it's supposed to do, and it makes your life simple. If you have a home theater, 
It's such an easy product to use. Sorry. Uh, and by the way, we are we are not paid by Clown Escape or any I'm of these brands. Player. If I, if I <laughs> was, I'd like, give me one. <laughs> <laughs> um, next one is video processing, Don. Oh, Mad VR. I so um, almost all my big theaters, I I, I spec in a Kaleidoscape and a Mad VR, especially yeah. if it's a two three five or two four zero, a widescreen system. Mad VR is is a phenomenal processor. Yeah, kick ass. I mean, it's it's great. So this is all building blocks. Again, everybody that put one in that didn't have one before is like, wow, where has it you been on my life? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a killer experience. Yep. Overrated, underrated. Um, <laughs> Let, let's, 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 I, let's I, tell, I, hold on. We forgot to tell the folks what a Mad VR is. Mad VR is a video processor. So it basically it can tone map your video content on the fly. It doesn't. Listen, if you have a, a projector, it really benefits that because it can keep it from clipping your highlights. It can keep shadow detail intact from getting crushed. Mm -hmm. So on the fly, it keeps it as pristine as, pos as, as possible for your projector. I don't know how well it's going to work on a television set, but it really does benefit it on projectors. But no, man, VR does not decode Dolby Vision. Um, you don't have to because it's really doing it on the fly yeah, already. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a great it doesn't product. matter. Again, it's a, it's a high-end luxury product. Yes. Right. If you want that extra, it's diminishing returns, right? You can get a, a, a two, three, five, a killer projector. You know, I never hear anybody bitching about, you know, having a anamorphic lens and those are expensive. So it's the next step. Okay. So that's what if, a mad viewer. You have a killer theater without it. Yes. But if you want to have the ultimate, having those two components are really so I would say it's underrated from that standpoint. It's just expensive. Overrated, underrated, Mad VR. Be honest. Come on, let's be honest. Underrated if you got a tiny <laughs> system. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Or it's over it's overrated. <laughs> You're poor. You can't keep saying that. You already used that for Cloud Escape. What do you want me to say, dude? I mean, it's a great product, dude. Okay. I mean, if you've got a if you have a projection system. It's underrated. If you have, you know, uh, 83 inch OLED, I don't know how much better you're going to get than that. So, yeah. All right. All right. You're going with the underrated. Oh, wait, you didn't give your opinion. Don't I'm going to tell you right now. What? <laughs> I, think it's a, I think it's an overrated product. Do you? Okay. Yeah, 100%. Right. I, I'm, right. really, I'm really upset about the fact that, like, they touted it, it as being upgraded from last year, from the last gen. But now all of a sudden uh, the cards are bigger or whatever. They have to get a new Hardware. chassis. Um, if if they if if they would have been like you know if you bought the last version for seventeen thousand dollars, trade it in, you get a seventeen thousand dollar credit for whatever you paid for. For the newer one and new chassis, maybe pay an extra two ninety nine or four ninety nine for the upgraded hardware. But like those people were just like yo you. You said you touted that this was like an upgradable thing. I mean, give them like a full credit for what they paid for the new version. It's really Don't be hard to talk to say overrated or underrated. I can talk. I, I reviewed it, so I'm gonna right. say it's, I'm gonna know, say it's over. Super, yeah, super, super high level, super expensive products. I mean, well, we got homeboy from uh, the best theater in Europe. He made his own Mad VR. If I had the budget, I would have one. If I had a projection system, if I had the budget, or somebody gave me a free one, I 100 I would I would take one. Um, but I did price it out. You can make one for about three thousand dollars with the software as well. You don't get you don't get the um, you don't get the special UI and all that stuff. But you can get the aspect ratio and change switching, which which I think is the best for HDR. You know the JVC does a pretty good job by itself. If you have a JVC, um, is this would I think would really benefit more in Sony projectors and like Epson's. But if you have like a JVC, um, I think that does a really good job of tone mapping. But I think the biggest feature for me, if you have a uh, 21 by 9 screen, CinemaScope screen, would be the aspect ratio changing. I think that is an underrated feature. Yeah, me, that's the sauce. Yeah, that's where it is. All else. But in total, for the price you're asking, I do think it's an overrated product. It's expensive as shit. Yeah. 
And I think I think you can get away with life in home theater without having that product. But I think, like, if we're going to put it into context, Maviar versus Kaleidoscape, um, home theater is all about content. It's not about just the video processing. So, I, so for the price of that that small processing feature, which I do think is a small processing feature, especially with the the tech in today's projectors and TVs, for the price they're asking, I think it's an overrated product. But in the context of just enjoying your media, which is what home theater is about, Cloud Escape delivers on its promise of giving you the best media possible in the simplest way that's usable. So Cloud Escape underrated, Mad VR overrated. Let's go over to the Focal Bathies or Batis, depending on where you are. These are headphones from Focal. Focal is typically known as a high end audio manufacturer. They have uh, started making headphones. Well, they have headphones. And this is, I believe, their first Bluetooth wireless headphones with noise canceling. Those ones right there. How much are those done? I think they dropped the price to 700 bucks a pair. Okay, 700 bucks a pair. Mm-hmm. Um, are they worth 700 bucks? Or would you go something with like um, Apple AirPods or for like 300 bucks or 400 bucks? Dude, listen, again, it boils down to what you like. I, I've used my bad tees now for a year or so. Um, I travel with them. I use them to make business calls. I listen to a ton of music on them. They're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. They sound like wired headphones. In fact, you can actually plug a digital cable into them and use them as wired headphones. I think they're awesome. And, you know, I've got, I've got, Seventeen hundred dollar headphones and two thousand or twenty five hundred dollar headphones. They sound so close to those, but you can walk around and use them. I think they're a value. I think they're amazing. They're the best in class for sure. I I would agree in that as well because I have used like the Sony's noise canceling headphones and Bose and the Air. What do they call it? AirPods or Air something? They've got new headphones now. I think. All right, so you're going. Uh, you're going underrated product. Um, it's underrated. It, great product yeah i think uh i think it is an underrated product i think it gets a lot of bad rap because it's like 800 bucks or 700 bucks now and if you're going to compare it to like the sony bose uh apple versions it's a better sounding headphone just for mm-hmm. an audio standpoint so i do think substantially better sounding yeah noise canceling is probably better on those other two inches. yeah yeah the sony and the um the sony and bose do a little bit better job but it's close. i mean you know, I was on an airplane. It was fine. It was great. Mm-hmm. Okay, next one is the RSL 12S subwoofer. This is um, a budget-oriented subwoofer. It's a gigantic subwoofer for, for the price. Everybody has reviewed this thing. It's, I think, $799. it has got a 12-inch driver in it, probably in the box the size of a 15-inch driver. And um, what do you think? Hard to beat. It's very musical. It plays low, plays loud. It's just a solid product, like all RSL products. It's a it's a it's a great sub for seven ninety nine. It's hard to beat, really, and it's musical. It's, it's an accurate sub. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go underrated as well. This is definitely worth seven ninety nine for sure. I think where it would re- i do think it could be a little bit tighter i mean it does have a little boom to it if, if you know if i'm going to be honest and i'm going to compare it to other 12 inchers that i have reviewed maybe even some 10 inchers uh, but where you know the performance for the price ratio definitely an underrated sub the build quality could be better the vinyl wrapping does kind of suck a little bit um well, for the price i mean yeah for the price are you buying a sub for its aesthetics I mean, that's, that's part of the factor, I think. Oh, okay. um, but uh, as far as the RSL is concerned, underrated subwoofer for 800 bucks. I don't know of another $800 subwoofer that is quite as uh, taut sounding with the now, extension that now, it has. Yeah. yeah, with the extension. Because this is, this is not like a normal size 12-inch. Uh, this is like a no, massive. No, but you have to have a larger cabinet to, to yeah. achieve the performance to, that they're doing. Correct. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're in the market for just really big performance at a real big budget, budget savings, uh, RSL. 
but I, I think the the twelve S really brings it more into the league of like um, maybe some like mid tier SVS subwoofers, like, like a SVS three thousand or something. Yeah, yeah. I might not be like as cool looking as those, or like well built looking as those, but performance wise, I'm going to put it up there with the some mid tier SVS subs. So I'm going underrated RSL twelve S subwoofer, Don. Underrated as well. Totally underrated. Great product. Yeah. All right. Next one is the Ever Solo streamers. So if you guys don't know what the Ever Solo is, they I, from the from the makers of Zidu has has come the Ever Solo Hi-Fi audiophile music streamers. It runs off of Android. It's got the nice little three and a half inch display. I believe it is. Display. It's got a, it's a phenomenal app phenomenal touch screen on it. it it's just a killer piece dude yeah and like, they're about sound, 600 bucks yeah it, well or you could spend 600 to 1200 yeah but like you i i just did a review of these uh rbh power monitors driven by the ever solo i was pretty blown away with the performance of it it's it's a great piece great piece in fact it's punches way way above its 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 pay grade I, I think if you buy a three or $4,000 DAC, you're not going to hear it different. I used it against the Hi-Fi Rose. I forgot what the number of it was. The five it's something. Yeah, this is like three, three, $4,000. It's bitching. It's a great looking piece, but I couldn't hear a difference. <laughs> I myself could not hear a difference also. Uh, so, <laughs> the but the difference in between those pieces... Obviously, this is not a review, but the build quality. But for the price of the Ever Solo, what a great, great little piece. It, um, it just does everything it's supposed to do. Uh, it runs on Android. I was expecting it to get a little bit janky at some point in time, but it never like crashed on me, so that's always a good thing. The build quality could be a little bit better. Could it? Yeah, it feels a little cheap. Um, no, it doesn't. It feels what like a Zidu. I mean, uh, really? Does it ever solo? Really? You thought the build quality was cheap? Which model do you have? Whatever the best one is, the limited edition. Well, the, that's a twelve hundred dollar piece, dude. Okay, well, it could still feel cheap. Just because twelve hundred bucks don't make it not feel cheap. Okay, I I have to disagree <laughs> with you. I thought I was pretty well built for what it was. Did you have the high, did, did you have the Hi-Fi Rose on hand? I've played around and listened to the Wi-Fi Hi-Fi Rose a lot. It's a great piece, don't don't get me wrong. I love that piece, but. I had the uh, DPM A6 ever solo. Yeah, man, I, I got the same I one. Think, I didn't think in any way, shape, or form it felt cheap. I got the same one from uh, Dream Media. Shop DreamMedia.com, yeah. by the way, if you want to pick up anything that we're mentioning in this video. Um, I thought it felt a little bit cheap. Like like the Zidu players. I feel like the Zidu players feel a little bit cheap, too. They can be pricey. I feel It feels like a Zidu player. That doesn't mean the performance is crappy. Like Zito players got great performance for media playback, uh, video playback, but they do feel a little bit cheap. I do think the Eversol feels a little bit cheap. I don't at all. And uh, but functionality wise, it's a listen. If you didn't touch it, if I didn't touch it, I'd be like, damn, great piece, great looking piece. Uh, but functionality wise and everything, it just works with the rune. Integrates well with all your, your music service. It's just a very easy product to use. It's like an iPhone. Correct. Only iPhone is built better. Um, underrated, <laughs> underrated product for me. My chopsticks are built better than my fork. I mean, really? Two left. We got speakers. We got, we got to go speakers. There Let's kick it. <laughs> okay. Everybody this year... And maybe the previous year also, Perlisten has been all over the place. They had the S-Series. They, they came out of the gate with the S-Series, which was like critically acclaimed, I think, across all publications and YouTube guys. And then the R-Series came out. And then um, they recently came out with their architectural stuff, their in-wall and ceiling stuff. Perlisten, overrated, underrated. Everybody's reviewed them this year. I think it's rated right where it needs to be. It's an amazing speaker. It's musical. What I love about Pro Listen is the, the lack of dynamic compression and the sheer output. 
per, per listen will play um, like a horn loaded giant speaker um, and, and compose itself at higher volumes. It's just a great product, top to bottom. Yes, I have reviewed, I think, every one of their lines. I, you know, I was lucky enough to review um, the whole S series, I think, last year. And then this year they came out with the R. Was it this year they came out with the R? Well, I reviewed the R series this year. You own R series. I do own R series as well. So obviously it's going to be underrated. Yeah, the whole statement. You, you actually bought them. Now they're killer speakers. <laughs> I, did, I did buy them, yeah. Um, but I, I think they get a little batter up because they're a little bit pricey. And I think it's been like common knowledge that Dan has kind of designed speakers from the bottom end, from the monolith, up to the Rendles, up to now the Perlissons. <laughs> no, no, listen, if you want a high output musical speaker, uh, meaning a speaker that can play like a horn, and cover a big space, but yet compose itself like, a, you know what I mean? It, it, like a audio fall type speaker. Yeah. It, it's really one of, there's very few choices close to it. Yeah. Keep in mind, um, you know, Don, we were talking about this before. It is a neutral speaker. It's a very neutral speaker. I mean, it, the, it's, it's, it doesn't have a signature sound. No. Yeah. I mean, the data is on the website, so it's not a secret. So they're very transparent in telling you exactly what it's, what it measures like a paradigm or a kef or a focal or whatever have their own kind of signature sound correct it's like like a graham cracker yeah it's just <laughs> hey, it is i mean it's a but it'll it'll give you back what you put into it yeah so flat might not be everyone's cup of tea but uh -huh. i think that's a, a you know if you want to do that's why i bought the r series because it's a very flat sounding speaker it's easy to gauge other speakers against it whether it's a little bit brighter a little bit softer or just a lot brighter or softer whereas the pro listen speakers are they're just they're right in the middle it's not particularly it's a cracker there's no cheese on it yeah you know I mean? it, it is like <laughs> if you listen to a focal or a paradigm they all have their like sa saucy sound which a lot of people love i like I it love sound, i love the sound of focal but but per listen give puts out what you put into it unlike most every speaker in the market it is literally the most neutral speaker on the on the planet yeah very neutral i mean if you like something with a little bit of flavor per listen probably not the speaker for no, you no. like in my two channel systems i i don't know if i'd pick per listen necessarily it, yeah. not your you know what i mean because i like a certain tone and a certain sound but for a home theater or even, or most, a lot of people at two channel. I mean, per listens is great. I mean, you, who can say something bad about them other than they're expensive? You get what you I, pay for. Yeah. I mean, I think if you're going to like EQ them, DSP them, mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. I, I have kind of bumped up, bumped up the high end a little bit. So, so is Gene, everybody. Yeah. Most, yeah. yeah. Just to give yeah. a little, just give a little salt on the top end there, you know, a little taste up the top, up on the top end. But if you buy per listens, you will not be disappointed if yeah. you have the chain of components behind them to make them sing. Yeah. And the mid range, there's a mid range, it's just like spot on. I mean, if you care about your mid range bass, that's and where, that that's beam, where that beam forming yeah. makes it so much easier if you don't have a perfect room or can't do all the acoustic treatments that you need to. It's a very forgiving speaker in that scenario. Yeah. Um, and they do double duty. I mean, they are THX Dominus certified, so you do get, you know, that output levels, the SPL that you need in Crazy larger output. spaces. Crazy output. Yeah. So not only are they very neutral sounding, very accurate sounding speakers for home theater, but you also get the same thing for two channel music sure. as well. And they're not like their bass response isn't like cut off or anything like that. They have very good extension on them. They have like all the ports on them. Correct. Yeah. Them. Yep. And uh, phenomenal speaker. They are a little bit pricey. Even the high, even their their best speakers, the high end speakers, are not ridiculous expensive. I mean, there's Focal speakers that are like hundred fifty thousand dollars. Well, I mean, when you compare them to, were they like nineteen grand a pair for the S series? Hours, mm -hmm. but you compare that nineteen grand to thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar flagship speakers. Yeah, they'll most likely play substantially louder, be, be more dynamic and not compress under louder volumes. Yeah. Which is what you want for home theater. Yeah, for sure. 
I mean, that's why they're Dominus certified. Um, whether or not, I know people kind of poo poo on them because they don't value the THX certification. But I mean, that's a badge that you know that if you if that speaker has it, it can play at a specific SPL that you're going to get a specific to performance. Yeah, yeah. Loud you want to listen to it. And um, for the price. That's where they get a little bit of a little uh, pushback on it because they're a little bit expensive, especially everything, everything yeah. expensive gets pushed back. Uh, so I'm going underrated here. I mean, looks wise, I'm on the fence between the looks. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. Um, build quality is like second to none for real. They use HDF. Their, I mean, crossovers are insane. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know great sounding speakers for the for the money for sure i mean better than speakers that cost several times more money that's why i bought them myself and i didn't even buy the best ones i bought like the i bought their cheaper ones r series yeah yeah the r series which Not I even think, the flagship r series yeah which i think are equally as good as their more expensive ones i'm sure i mean they're, uh, they're more expensive they're a little, little bit better but percent there yeah ne they're, negligible they're, to my ears but william twitter and and whatnot there, there's a performance enhancement to those, but mm -hmm. it's not, it's not huge. The last hardware that we're going to bring up is uh, maybe the cousin of these speakers. Oh boy. These speakers have been everywhere this year. I've seen them everywhere. As a matter of fact, I've seen another review come out. I think two reviews come out this week, this past week, matter of fact. It would be the speakers that are, I, I think I might have been the first to review like four years ago would be the Arendel sound speakers. These are almost kind of like maybe the new Klipsch for the ordinary per I'm not listen, I'm not saying they sound Why would the you same. Say that? I'm not saying they sound really? the same as Klipsch, but I'm saying they've they've been getting around so much. They're kind of like uh, So a Arendel set up performance standard and and obtainable speakers. They, correct. they were gate, gateway in the hi-fi. Yeah. Or the high-end world Yes, um, the new gateway no, for sure. No quality, sound quality. They're they're amazing. Now they've got a lot of competition, which yeah. they did a year ago. The Martin Logans and various different brands, but they're still a. If you own a Rendell speakers, you're doing good. You're, you are doing good. You're doing good. Um. So yeah, Rendell speakers. The and you know we went. I think this was a nice transition from the Perlison, because many people know that um, designer came from like. Yeah, they're not as good as the Perlisons. Period. End of story. But they're damn close. They're really good. Build quality. Listen, I I personally kind of like the looks of the Rendell a little bit better than the Perlison. I'm not gonna yeah, lie. They look cool. Yeah, they look super cool. That's one of the reasons why. One of the reasons why I wanted to review them back in like 2017 or what was it, 2018, 2017, 2018, because I had not seen another speaker that looked as cool for home theater. So I did reach out. And you had like 12 followers, so you needed to. I had like 12 followers and I had to build upon that. And thank you, Arendel, for being like uh, very uh, cordial and being, I think I was the first reviewer to get those speakers. Thank you, Arendel, for trusting me in that. Um, but ever since then, man, they've been around everywhere the past like two years. They are great speakers, but just as uh, Don has said, Don said that there are other brands, Elac, Martin Logan. Um, I recently reviewed some definitive technology speakers. <sighs> oh, fire speakers right there. Don't don't sleep on those. Damn, what's the red ones that you just reviewed? Gold. These guys Gold. right behind me, Golden Air T sixty sixes. Oof, yikes, man. I mean, there's some, there's competition out there. Like, I get it. Um, but Rendell jumped the game up. They, they, they did. Set a, they set yeah. a new standard yep. on, on an affordable tower. Now, you know, Focal's got new towers. Paradigm does. A lot of companies have taken notice, and they make a lot of speakers in that price range that are excellent. It's really hard to go wrong, really. All right, so I, th I think Rendell is probably the most hyped speaker probably this year. I think so. Think so. This year, hundred percent. Maybe last year. No, this year too. I've, I've seen, I've seen a lot of the audio file. The two channel guys hop on the Arendel, uh review bandwagon, and uh, even even some people that aren't even really into home theater has gotten yeah. Arendel speakers. So they're really, 
they're really reaching overrated underrated for all the exposure they've gotten this year i feel like they're the most overexposed speaker this year that i've seen they're I'm going to say they've got so much more exposure than Klipsch this year, which is a pretty high bar to set. It's just so hard to make a choice because there's so many good speakers. I mean, hell, Kef's got a phenomenal line of speakers in that price range. Paradigm does. Focal. I mean, you know, another speaker that's absolutely huge in Europe but gets no play in America is Dolly. I think that Rendell's really hit a nice spot between looks price and performance they, they have the, like all three tiers just kind of, for what they are amazing speakers they're but there there are some speakers that have come up between when i originally reviewed them to now underrated, Fucking underrated. Uh, dude, i mean that that's they deserve what all the accolades that they get let's put it that way i think they already got the accolades a couple of years ago i'm going overrated on this one and that's why you bought a pair of the arendals no Back are then, you, I bought them because they're amazing. About Reynolds being overrated. Yeah, I'm going overrated for the rentals for this year because they've been surpassed by other speakers. Um, g- kudos for their marketing department, though, for the PR people. So uh, they're, I still yeah, think yeah. they're great speakers. It's still I think a great speaker. Martin Logan Motion Series is really great too. Martin Logan, uh, the entry level ones that I reviewed, the fa- not the founders, the foundation. I think it was called. Um, you guys need to hop on those ones as well. E- much more easily accessible and, and and or you said you mentioned founders the paradigm founders paradigm yeah phenomenal yeah Fantastic. phenomenal speaker for the same price um although listen I, I'll, I'll still give the arendal i really do like the way the arendals look oh china we are hey. doing uh hyped up products of 2023 overrated underrated nakamichi soundbar all that thing um it's actually pretty awesome so it's it's, it's tough it's tough to say they want to send me one but uh with uh my changing uh living situation i told him to hold off on sending it um because i I, won't have a place to review it Uh, the demo we got at ces was dude he kept on putting it so loud though like i was like yo can we turn it down he's like you want to go to 80 i'm like no (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, I, I got ears, bro. I need to keep them. I think I gotta gotta make money with these things. So, um, as a alternative, uh, yeah, an alternative. It's good for some people. Um, I wouldn't say it's for everybody. And um, I've heard a bunch of sound bars. Even like when TCL tried to have us like look at the sound bar back in 2020. Uh, Michael Walker. I don't think the Nakamichi Dragon is overrated. Um, it was actually very impressive. And um, everyone that reviewed it, uh, you know, has, has good things to say about it. But again, I think it's I think it's a specialized and you, you can't even get one. You have to be like on their wait list. They do make they produce a 500 at a time. Um, I guess it's very hard to produce that the, the actual bar, the aluminum for the bar or something like that. They use a, mm. like a car manufacturer to get Ugh. that thing squared away. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, if it if, if it works for you, it, cool. If it doesn't, cool. I mean, you know, uh, let's move on to the, um, the. We haven't done the movie section yet. Oppenheimer. I'm a history buff, so I really enjoyed it. Um, I didn't watch it for the surround sound. I thought when the sound did kick in, it was great. I thought the use of surround was great on it, but. I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was way longer than it should be, though. Would you put that in the over? It, this is not just. This is like an overall, just movie in general. This got nothing to do I, with the. I, I loved Oppenheimer, the movie, but again, history buff, different perspective. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it'd be a great surround demo. Just because it was shot with from Christopher Nolan doesn't make it some cinematic, grandiose new experience. Mm-hmm. I feel like. This movie is equally as boring as what uh, the air Dunkirk. Dun- Dude, Dunkirk was, was pretty awesome, bro. <laughs> okay, clearly you thought Dunkirk was awesome, so you would think Oppenheimer is probably awesome as well. I still haven't gone through Dunkirk because I just fall asleep um, every time. Did you uh, see the movie that's the other side of Dunkirk? I'll have to. I'll have to look it up. Okay, if it wasn't shot by Christopher Nolan, nobody's going to care about it. Okay. Uh, 
uh, Oppenheimer was, I thought Oppenheimer was extremely boring. I fell asleep hardcore for like 45 minutes at the IMAX or Dolby Cinema. And I woke up and I felt like I missed absolutely nothing in it. Um, if we're just talking about like visual aesthetics, it's fine for a documentary. But just if Seinfeld was shot in IMAX, would that make it a better show? Uh, I don't know. Um, as long as that bass line is in Atmos. <laughs> <laughs> you, have the, you have the depth of a puddle. <laughs> um, if you want a, a, an exquisite Christopher Nolan movie that came out recently, go check out Tenet, which nobody went to go see. That's a movie you can watch over and over and over again, still not understand what the hell's going on. <laughs> but it's still good because you try to figure out what's going on. Oppenheimer was okay. I mean, the, the bomb was in it for about two minutes, maybe a minute. Um, other than that, yeah, it's a, it's a talky talky movie, and that's fine. It's a talky talk. You know what? You know? I just started watching today because I was uh, going through. I saw I found a hard drive. Put on Eyes Wide Shut. Man, oh you guys remember that one? Yeah, that's yeah. very talky talky, but it's a lot of you know booty booty too. You <laughs> <laughs> know, Nicole Kidman Terrible. in her prime, dude. Damn. <laughs> Uh, oh, shit. Heartbreak feels I'm good all, like, in a place like this. Shoulder, making sure mom's She's built like a 14 year old girl. What's that? She's built like a 14 year old girl. I, I mean, well, I'm, I'm not sure we should uh, acknowledge that one, Don. No, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> that one. No kidding does nothing for me. <laughs> uh, all right. So, Darkest um, Hour, Elder One, Darkest Hour. Yeah, dark, that, was what, that was with the Gary Oldman. Okay, 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 yeah. So that that's was, the opposite yeah. of Dunkirk. That's much, like what was happening. Yeah, yeah it's much better than uh, Dunkirk, by the way. Uh, I thought so. All right, so Oppenheimer, I'm going over it. I think you guys under it. Well, China, you didn't see it. so. But you did see Barbie. Barbie was fucking stupid. <laughs> the whole fucking movie was a waste of my time. Everybody praised about it and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, fuck, really? <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> The millennials fucking like it, but I just didn't. Oh. Uh, Barbie was stupid. So okay, so you know it was good. The Taylor Swift concert, and I don't even, I don't, I can't even name one of her songs. Stop. That Stop. Was good. Okay, don't veer off. That's the next one. All right. Uh, so uh, the, uh, <laughs> the, all right. So yeah. So I saw the movie at the theater and then at home, and I do recall it not being in Atmos that particular at the end of the movie that that particular song mm, okay. um i like the song it's a good song but um but yeah i, I think the movie in general didn't have a great at most mix either and the movie would be i would classify it as an overrated movie although i did enjoy it more than oppenheimer <laughs> <laughs> you would you fucking <laughs> 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 the dumbest fucking shit. I'm like, what? uh, okay. Ta mean. Taylor Swift <laughs> Eras Tour it had great sound, even though I knew none of the music. I was like, that's pretty damn good. We watched it, we enjoyed it. Yeah, under oh, so you going underrated then? What Taylor Swift Eras Tour? I mean, look for production and sound quality. That's what it's about. Absolutely great, but as far as the actual music, man. It's not the fucking music. It's not the movie, the overall experience yeah. of the movie. The cinematic experience. I guess if you think she's hot, that's cool. Uh, we're not talking about her hotness. She's not hot. She looks like a... Never mind. <laughs> okay, I don't know what that means. I'm going underrated on this because I feel like... Because I went to the concert. I saw the show. I saw the movie. Of course you did. I saw I saw both, and everybody was having a good time on opening night. There was girls and adults dancing in front of the cinema, which I had not ever experienced before. So, I mean, um, and a lot of people, such as yourself, would be poo-pooing on the experience just because it's, it's a good. popular it's, it's Taylor not Swift. Good. It's not good music. It doesn't matter if it's good music. It's good cinema, and it made for good cinema at that particular time. And it proved to be the best-selling concert movie of all time. And also, sure she's now a billionaire off of this concert, so production yep, quality is also good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going underrated because I feel like there's a lot of machismo that would keep uh, other people from going to see it. Underrated for me. China, you're a music guy. Um, I DJ weddings. Well, I did. Now I can't Ooh. anymore. That's, so. that's the worst. Um, so, yeah, I played Taylor Swift and 
People are crazy. They lose their shit. Yeah. What? People like. It's popular. Yeah. <laughs> yeah underrated, underrated. Overrated, underrated. Oh, I mean, I, people look like they were having a fucking blast. So I, I guess yeah. it's probably... Yeah, the 17,000, awesome. 13 year old girls and their dads. Yeah, dude. Don was just talking about 14 year old girls, so he's all about it. <laughs> I'm talking about Nicole Kidman, so like a 14 year old. <laughs> um, um, Godzilla minus one. The problem is, it, the, we talked about that earlier, Shane. The psychology, yeah. like it got a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes, and it was so raved about. When I got there, I was like, Oh my god, this is gonna be the best movie ever, and it was good, but it wasn't like. I, I guess I expected more. You know, it's like when you go to an underrated movie and you really like it. Oh, so it, it was very good. It was a very good movie, but it you're wasn't giving, like the best giving, movie ever. You're giving Godzilla overrated status. Damn, absolutely. Wow, I'm going underrated because I feel like uh, it's uh, it's a low budget Godzilla movie, but I think it over delivered on what it did and the emotional beats. You probably think of Godzilla movie as like the guy in a rubber suit, yeah, but it, whole, it, whole backstory it delivered it. pretty well, I think. Yeah, whatever. Maybe because you're white and I'm Asian. I, I know. That's probably dude, why. Dude, I live with a Japanese girl. Are you shitting me? She really? probably liked it. Probably jo- Joey it, probably I, really enjoyed like, it. I called everybody. I'm like, she's she didn't really die. She's gonna live to the end. And blah blah blah. Like, it was really predictable. Yeah. Of course, it's a Godzilla movie. Of course, it's predictable. He's gonna come out. He's gonna come out, smash Japan, and then walk back in the water. That's every Godzilla movie ever. And last one: audio advice live. Overrated experience. Underrated experience. Oh, dude, I thought it was fantastic. Underrated. It was a yeah, yeah. best audio underrated. show I've ever been to. Yeah, yeah, hands down. I hope it. I hope it stays as small as it is because I think yeah, that was they like did a the, great job. The beauty of it, you know, the hotel um, was great, the city was great, the food was good. Yeah, underrated show for sure. It was. Um, I don't know if it cost to go there or not, but uh, obviously we didn't pay. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, I have no idea. Uh, I thought it was a yeah, great show. I mean, you called it small, I guess, in relation I mean, to like compared CS? to to compared to some of the other, you know. Uh, Axpona and what you know, CD. I think the coolest right. part was the amount of Atmos systems they had yeah. set up. Uh, yeah, the, the where Tech most one. audio shows don't. Yeah, they don't. So I was, I was That's super. Or whatever has them. Guys, what's on your overrated, underrated list? Leave your thoughts down below in the comments. Also, check out the spatial audio TC disc. I don't know what was the acronym. S T C S A T C. Uh Sacked. Uh there's gonna be uh the website. I don't know what's what's the what's the address? Spatialcd.com. Spatial spatialcd.com. I had to spell it out, otherwise it won't let me put the link in there. Save 15% on your purchase of the spatial audio calibration toolkit. And there's a 25 page guide or something to help you calibrate and do all that kind of fun stuff. Yum. Yeah, it's good stuff. And good stuff of course, going. of course, Don is going to be back uh, another two weeks. Uh, home dinner hangout next Thursday. Thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Leave your thoughts on your over under list and send in your theater to be roasted for the next home theater hangout. Send your theater in to be roasted. <laughs> oh, you never what? Seen that?